This is a Dell P2210F monitor. I took this back from a customer's site. They say that it's not working. So I'm just gonna flick the switch here and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so there's nothing coming on on the screen. And if I look down here, you can see that there are no lights coming on. So if I press the power button, press and hold it. No, there's nothing happening with this at all. So I'm gonna take out the power board and see if we can find out what's wrong with this. I've removed the power board, I've scanned it in, and this is what it looks like. So we're gonna start at our AC input. So you can see we have three pins right here, and they are marked live, earth, and neutral. So first of all, we're gonna take a measurement between the live and the neutral, and see if we're getting our AC voltage to the board. Now, before I go any further, this video is purely for demonstration purposes only. Please don't start opening up every piece of AC equipment in the house and attacking it with a multimeter. What I'm doing here is in a controlled environment where there's no chance of me causing any harm to myself. With my monitor plugged in, I want to check and see if we're getting the correct input AC voltage across our live and our neutral pins. So let me introduce my multimeter and this time we're measuring in high voltage AC. In Ireland, we have a mains voltage of AC 230 volts. So that's what I would expect to see between our live and our neutral. When I place my black probe to my neutral pin and my red probe to my live pin, I find that it measures 0, 0.00 volts. So we're measuring zero volts across our live and our neutral. What does this mean? Well, what it means in this scenario is the fuse in the plug was actually blown. When I replaced that fuse and plugged it in, the monitor started working again. So at this point, I'm gonna flip this from a repair into a tutorial. I've been meaning to do another switch mode power supply, and this presents me with the opportunity to go through that circuit and hopefully add to what I did the last time. So let's start by taking our measurements again with our fuse replaced and with the board now working. So with my fuse replaced and my monitor once again plugged in, I place my black probe to the neutral pin, my red probe to the live pin, and this time I measure 230 volts AC. So let's follow along the path of our live input. Well, our live comes onto the board here, as we saw already, comes along this track to the first component, which is F850. So this is actually a fuse. So after the fuse, it comes along this path down here, at which point we have a thermistor, which is just a temperature-based resistor. And from here, it comes up along this path and onto this inductor. Coming through the inductor, it then makes its way onto one of the center pins of our bridge rectifier. Our neutral comes in on this pin right here. It follows this track down here and back up and around and onto our inductor. It comes through our inductor and then makes its way onto the second center pin of the bridge rectifier. Now the purpose of our bridge rectifier is to convert our 230 volt AC mains voltage into something like 310 volts DC. If we mark out the pins of the bridge rectifier, you can see that our AC comes in on our center pins and then our DC comes out on our outer pins. Now the purpose of this circuit right here is to reduce the EMI and RFI interference. So we have a number of passive components, the inductors and the capacitors do this. We also have a couple of protection components. We have a fuse here to protect against overcurrent and we have a varistor here to protect against over voltage. But the only real test that we need to carry out to confirm that this whole section is working right here is to confirm that the same 230 that we measure across the live and the neutral pins here is also present at these two center pins of our bridge rectifier right here. So with my multimeter once again measuring for high voltage AC, I place my black probe 
to the, one of the center pins of the bridge rectifier and I place my red probe to the other center pin of the bridge rectifier and I find that I measure 230 AC. So we've confirmed that we have the correct 230 volts AC across the two center pins of our bridge rectifier but how do we know that our bridge rectifier is actually working and converting that AC into a high voltage DC? Well as you can see the two outer pins of the bridge rectifier are marked plus and negative and this is where we can measure that output DC. So this time with my multimeter measuring in high volts DC I place my black probe to the minus pin of the bridge rectifier and my red probe to the plus pin of the bridge rectifier and I find that it measures 308.5 volts so almost 310 volts DC. So the fact that we are measuring 308.5 volts DC across the positive and negative of our bridge rectifier means that our bridge rectifier is working and everything is good up to this point. What's also important here is that 308.5 volts is very very stable. It's not fluctuating up and down. If you find that the voltage here is fluctuating up and down that can be indicative of a fault. So what have we achieved here? We've converted our 230 AC coming from the mains into a very high voltage 308.5 volts DC. So what are we going to do with that high voltage DC? Well let's build out the next part of the circuit and see. I've zoomed out a small bit just so we can see the next part of the circuit. So if we follow our positive DC it comes across the positive pin of our main filter capacitor here and along this track. From here it comes across resistor R853 and jumps across to here. Next it follows this track down to here. Next it passes through the primary winding of T850 which is our main SMPS transformer. So it comes across the primary winding between these two points. Next it goes through a small little inductor and onto the drain pin of this power MOSFET right here. Marking in our power MOSFET you can see that we have our drain our gate and our source. The source pin is connected to ground through a resistor. Now the gate pin of this power MOSFET is controlled by the pulse width modulation IC. The pulse width modulation IC tells this gate when to switch on and off and that in turn tells this circuit to switch on and off. Now in my crude demonstration here I'm obviously just switching this on and off once every second or so but in reality this can have a frequency of something like 40 kilohertz. In this switch mode power supply I measured a frequency of 44 kilohertz. So that's how quickly the pulse width modulation I see is switching that gate on and off. And just in case it's difficult to see this on the board through the magic of Photoshop I'm going to show you what this looks like as just that circuit on its own. So if we remove the background we can see we have the circuit there and to show you how it pulses it goes like this. When the gate is switched on So in short, the purpose of this little circuit here is to function as an oscillation circuit and it switches on and off the primary winding of this transformer very, very quickly. And as we know with a transformer, when we charge and then discharge the primary coil, that induces a current in the secondary coils over this side. So moving over to our secondary side of the transformer you can see that we have three different coils on the secondary side. So when our primary coil charges and then collapses it induces a current in this coil, a current in this coil and a current in this coil. Just a quick note on this at this point. My graphic for the transformer here is obviously very primitive. I've just used the symbol for an inductor to indicate that there's a coil there. Really on a transformer the coils are wrapped hundreds of times around this center core. But if you want to see a proper picture of it if you google for a transformer 
coil I'm sure you'll find a better picture I'll improve on this graphic for the next one so what's the purpose of these secondary side coils well if we take the first of these coils right here when we charge and discharge the voltage in this primary side coil that induces a voltage in this secondary side coil now the voltage it induces in the secondary side coils is high frequency AC so what we're looking for is a usable DC voltage so as you can see it follows along this track here where we have two diodes these diodes are fast recovery diodes and they rectify that high frequency AC to a usable DC voltage on this side now that DC voltage has to go through a low pass filter where we have capacitors and inductors to make it a flat DC voltage that is usable to other circuits within this monitor and as you can see at the end of this track that voltage which I measured as being 14.6 volts comes down to a connector which feeds it to another circuit on another part of the monitor the charging and collapsing of the primary side coil also induces a voltage in these two other coils right here on the secondary side and these voltages are also rectified by diodes and they produce two other different voltages that are used by different parts of the circuit on the monitor and if we want to confirm that those secondary voltages are online the best place to measure is usually these output capacitors on every single one of the secondary voltage rails there will be an output electrolytic capacitor to filter out any noise so this is the one I'm going to show measuring on here so I place my red probe to the positive side I place my black probe to the negative side I introduce my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range and when I measure there I find it measures 14.60 volts so we can do the same for the capacitors on the other two DC outputs to confirm that they're also online and that's where I'm going to leave the video for this week guys that's as much learning as I can squeeze out of this monitor for the moment obviously it's a disappointment that there was nothing to fix in it because it was just a fuse that was blown but what I've tried to do here is build on the last switch mode power supply repair that I did this was probably the second stage of maybe five stages where I can hopefully piece all of this together and give you one video with a switch mode power supply where I can go through it in the same manner and take you from start to finish but you can let me know down in the comments does this work am i wasting my time what do you think um and i'll be back with something else next week